choosing play objects for your infant or toddler. It's a seemingly simple task, but once you go searching, a lot of choices and a lot of questions can pop up. Like, how many toys should I get? What kind? This is getting really expensive. Does it have to be this way? Do I need to stick to the age range that's recommended on a toys package? And then what about those bouncers and exercisers and play mats? Do I need them all? Will my child get bored or even fall behind in their development if I don't have them? This really fun aspect of child rearing can quickly feel overwhelming without some direction. So I am here to offer you a unique perspective on choosing play objects that will hopefully save you lots of stress, money, and confusion. Let's start by going back to the basics. Play. Why do children play? The answer is to understand the world and to understand themselves. As human beings, we know that we are wired for learning. From the moment we're born, we are investigating our surroundings, trying to make sense of everything that we see and experience. To a child, there is no difference between playtime and the rest of life, whether they are chasing a squirrel at the park, banging pots and pans together on the kitchen floor, using a spoon to bring applesauce to their mouth, or even trying to self-soothe while falling asleep at nap time. All of those experiences are motivated by this internal longing to understand. So when children play, they're really working. They are scientists asking questions, testing hypotheses, exploring unknowns, and drawing conclusions. Why does the ball roll away from me when I set it on this ramp? How strong are my arms and legs? And can they get me to the top of that climber? If I build my block tower in the exact same way over and over again, will it always fall down? Before ever buying a toy for your infant or toddler, I feel that it's really important that we pause and consider their play as the precious work that it truly is. Because in doing so, we're gonna approach our role in a very deliberate way. Rather than seeing ourselves as teachers or entertainers, we come to understand that our job is to be a curator. We can set up their environment to be sure that our little scientist has everything she needs to explore what is intriguing and relevant to her at any given moment. We can ask ourselves, how do I maximize accessibility and safety and ensure that the toys and materials I provide meet my child's needs? I would answer that question with a two-pronged approach. So first, rely on your observations of your child's capabilities and interests, and then choose play objects that are open-ended and will allow them to be used in multiple ways for many functions. So for example, if you have a 12-month-old who is fascinated by sound, then offering a wide range of simple plastic, wood, metal, and fabric objects from around your house will give him plenty of combinations of banging things together. Really think about creating a brain building space for your scientist. What objects can be used to investigate the concepts of weight, color, texture, temperature, velocity? How can you enable them to ask questions through their play about orientation, trajectory, rotation, you'll likely find that the simpler the object, the more versatile it is. You know those subscription services that are popping up all over your Facebook and Instagram feeds right now? The ones that offer these perfectly curated toy boxes for every stage of development? Yes, they are pretty and they're really tempting, but the objects they contain are usually designed for a single purpose, like a matching puzzle or a stacking tower or a ramp for cars. There's certainly nothing that's inherently wrong about these toys, of course, but they're expensive. They also put us in a position of directing our child's play towards what we think they should be learning, and they rely on the child to be in that exact phase or stage of play to use them. Your child might not be ready for those toys, or they might grow out of them really quickly. So again, I would advocate for finding objects like these 
from around your house that are open-ended and not really age or stage specific. So these are just a couple of things that I have around my house that I think are really fun. Cups, I used to use these. I used to drink out of these when I was a little girl. Um, but just the way that they, they fit together, they offer a wide range of colors. You can stack them easily. You can fill them with things and take things out. A simple shot glass, metal shot glass. Oh, these are some of my favorite things. Um, these are the lids of those juice containers. You know, if you get frozen orange juice and then mix it up uh, with water in a pitcher. These have no sharp edges to them whatsoever. So once you're done with that packaging, you can keep these and they, they're wonderful. They really, they click and they stack together. You can collect lots of them. They, they roll, they make a really wonderful noise. Um, basic things from your kitchen. So I've got this wooden rolling pin, child size rolling pin, um, this wooden spoon, that is uh, a tablespoon and teaspoon. You can give this to your child. Just a plastic rice scoop. A really basic bowl um, that is, it's safe. It's got no uh, sharp edges. It's not gonna come apart. These are great for infants and toddlers. A funnel. <laughs> And then these are two things that I made just from fabric scraps sitting around my house. So I've got uh, this little ball that I've got three different patterns on. I stitched together and then stuffed with foam. And then this was the simplest thing to make. It's just two pieces of fabric that I stitched together. This is one of my absolute favorite toys for infants. So you can just prop it on the floor like this and it's something really easy that they can um, start to use as one of their very first toys. So once they gain that ability to roll over and reach, they can easily grab this and it's something that they can, they can mouth, they can, you know, move around in their hands, they can set down easily. It's, it's really easy for them to grab. And this thing can have a million different functions and be useful for many, many years. So here are some other objects that I find are really useful to have around for your infant and toddler. Buckets of different sizes and materials. Balls in a variety of textures, weights, and sizes. Wooden curtain rings. Silicone baking cups. Tree cookies. Plastic jugs filled with sand or water. Blocks of foam, wood, silicone, cardboard, fabric, hair rollers, silk play scarves, and a personal favorite, monkey knots. These are designed as doorstops for your nautical themed beach house, but they make amazing gross motor toys for your toddler who's really into heavy lifting. If we only buy toys that are designed for a specific age group or purpose, are going to need an entire household of things that our child will move through quickly and become bored with easily. So rather, I suggest creating a toy library of these open-ended objects that you can pull from as needed. And then remember to come back to observation. Regularly find time to watch your little one play without distraction, without intervening, and without any sort of agenda. While you're sitting there observing with an open mind, the questions that your child is asking through their play will be revealed to you, giving you the exact information you need to curate their play space for the day and the week ahead. You can then draw from your toy library, putting together a unique and a personalized combination of objects. And remember that less is more, so start with a few items and see how your child responds. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel if you're looking for more ideas on raising young children with trust and respect. And if you'd like to join my online community where we dive deep into these topics, you can look in the description below for the link to my private Facebook group. Thanks so much for watching.